So the Modern Warfare 2 beta has come and gone, ladies and gentlemen, and it's really fair to say that the feedback on this next iteration of the Call of Duty franchise has been just so incredibly divisive so far. Depending on who you follow on social media, you would have gotten a very different assessment as to how this game feels to play as it stands. So I really wanted to take the time with my thoughts, understand how the game plays from a design perspective, and try to dial in on what Infinity Ward are trying to accomplish here and then provide feedback accordingly. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here and today we are reviewing the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta. So obviously a few things that need to be said here before we go any further. This video is based on the beta and therefore there is a chance that things may change prior to the release of the final game. I'm not going to sit here and say that the very core of the game is going to change, but smaller things can most certainly be iterated on based on feedback circulated throughout the COD community right now. Point is, I would recommend checking the reviews once again come release time as things may change. In saying all that though, I want to start off with some of the things that I liked about what we've seen so far from the game. I'm an optimist by nature, so let's kick off by commending Infinity Ward on where they've got things right, because they have done some things right despite what you may be hearing. Starting things off, the presentation of this game is pretty top notch. And when I say that, I'm talking about the audio and the visual fidelity of the game. Now before anyone says it, because I know it's coming, we will talk footstep audio in a bit more detail later on. Now admittedly, I'm playing the game on potato settings because your boy here, he's got to sweat and get those juicy frame rates nice and high. But I did check the game out on the ultra settings as well, and there really is a lot to like here. And beyond the crashing to desktop, top issues that, I will admit, plagued the beta, I actually experienced a pretty smooth experience in general running of the game when I was in the game and shooting people. Frame rates were high and I don't recall experiencing too many bugs at all. I know the experience on the stability side of things did vary depending on what platform you were on, so I know for many that wasn't the case, but I might have been a bit lucky. The animation department also killed it with the first person weapon animations really sort of tightening up that visual fidelity side of the game. And audio wise, ah, uh, damn. The weapon audio in this game is crisp, punchy, and it really sells the scene. I'm a sucker for good weaponry audio in games, and this is right up there with some of the best that I've heard lately. Battlefield 2042 doesn't even hold a candle to it comparatively, and, you know, given that the audio in those games historically has been pretty good, that's a very strange thing to be saying. I have to also admit that I am really enjoying the new Gunsmith 2.0 system that's thrown its way into Modern Warfare 2 here. The way in which one weapon platform can be modified into multiple different types of weaponry, all sharing the same attachment with a few model specific exceptions here and there, does a really good job at reducing the grind between guns and gives you a bit more flexibility with each weapon platform you use faster. We only had the M4 and the Lockman 7.62 platforms to utilize in this test build, but I had a lot of fun unlocking all the different variations here and working around them to come up with new and unique builds. The Lockman sub, which is basically an MP5, but clearly they couldn't get the licensing rights for it in this game, was a real menace to use, and I'll definitely be using that weapon in the main game when that comes out. I also thought that the general map design of this game was a bit better and a little tighter when compared against the launch maps of Modern Warfare 2019. Farm 18, Brenberg Hotel, and Mercado La Almas, I hope I got that name right there, I found myself enjoying those a good amount, and they seem to really go back to a more traditional three-lane design with some more modern spins on the design format that you would see in arena games like that. And for me, that's just the right amount of complexity you want to be seeing for an arena shooter like COD. Complexity for the sake of complexity is trying to reinvent the wheel where you really don't need to. Piccadilly from Modern Warfare 2019 is a perfect example of a map that tries to reinvent the wheel for the sake of reinventing the wheel. Unfortunately not all the maps were a complete win for me, Valderas Museum didn't do it for me as much, but 3 for 4 maps ain't such a bad scorecard in the map department. If we can maintain that average for the rest of the game's life cycle then we've done pretty well I guess. Now a couple more controversial points from me and I'm gonna try and approach this in a level-headed way here because I know for some these things are pretty big deals that impact 
the core experience and their enjoyability of the game, and I do want to approach this with a level-headed mentality. Firstly, the gunplay. I actually really liked the gunplay in this game, but I want to put a big ol' asterisk on that at the same time, because there is a caveat here and we'll get into that in a second. At its core, I liked the gunplay. I liked the way in which the weaponry handled, I enjoyed the way in which different attachments impacted how weapons performed, and I liked shooting in this game. From a keyboard and mouse perspective, I felt like things were very responsive and I felt like my aim was being recognized by the game as being true input. I know that sounds like a strange thing to say here, but after the disaster that was Battlefield 2042 and the mouse input that is still broken in that game to this day, I feel like it's worth bringing up. I also felt like the mechanical recoil side of the game provided enough of a skill curve for really honing in your weapon's recoil and making the most of your accuracy. And yes, I also enjoyed the general time to kill in this game. It was very snappy, and while I agree that there were some instances where the TTK meant that I had no time to react, most COD games in recent history have followed this exact same formula. So I kind of expected that this is what I would be getting myself into, you know? It's what I expected so I wasn't surprised by the longer time to kill, and therefore it didn't really stick out to me as a bad thing. Now, I am an advocate for games with longer time to kills as well. I love games such as Apex Legends and the skill ceiling that that game offers through its longer time to kill time. But COD to me has always done shorter time to kill times and I don't necessarily have any problems with it following this pattern of design. I can understand the arguments and the wishes for the time to kill to be lengthened in this game and I personally wouldn't be opposed to that by the same token, but at this stage I'm a little indifferent on the time to kill. I don't mind it now and I wouldn't mind it if it was a bit longer either. It doesn't really bother me that much. But as I said, there was a caveat to this point about the gunplay. That being that the muzzle effects and the visual recoil in this game, not the mechanical recoil, the visual recoil, really feels like it's been dialed to 11. There were times where I just couldn't see where I was shooting and that really detracted from the experience a little bit for me. I get that Infinity Ward here are going for a more grounded, slightly more quote-unquote immersive experience here, which is something that will loop into our conversation going forward here, but given the pace of Call of Duty gameplay here, I truly believe that clarity of your sights and, you know, seeing what you're actually shooting at in a fight is critical when it comes to gameplay. There were multiple occasions where I lost track of the bloke I was shooting at due to the visual recoil and the muzzle effects, which just felt frustrating from the gameplay perspective. Again, I get the goal for setting the scene and making an immersive game. Hell, I mean, keep the current settings for the single player if you want to really sell the immersion on that front, but for the multiplayer, I think we need to clean up the visual side of the gunplay a little bit here to produce a tighter experience. And next up, the movement. Now, this is one hot topic of contention here, and I wanna start off by saying a couple of things. Firstly, this game is slower in overall pace over Modern Warfare 2019. And secondly, I can understand why you speed demons in the audience are unhappy about that. Slide cancelling has been removed from the game this time around, and we all saw exactly what that mechanic allowed you to do in the movement department of Modern Warfare 2019. Love it or hate it, I think we can all acknowledge that it did add an element to the skill gap of the game to a certain extent. I personally, throughout the lifespan of Modern Warfare 2019, never really took advantage of slide cancelling that much, so I haven't noticed too big a hit to my overall playstyle with this game by comparison. But again, I can see why some people are going to find the overall slower pace of the game a little frustrating. If some people decided to stick with an older COD game as a result, that would not surprise me either, but as a relatively aggressive player myself, I find myself getting used to the movement system here, and I was able to still really abuse it to my advantage. I still didn't feel like the game was anchoring me down as much on the movement front. I was able to make enough plays where I needed to. The only movement mechanic that really bugged me this whole time was the wall ledge mechanic, as I found myself just dangling there from times as a free target when I really needed to dip from chasing enemies. I personally don't think that the movement system on its own, exclusively here, is going to discourage aggressive play on its own volition and I still think there's enough to work with to get the results you need to as an aggressive player. I do, however, feel like there are additional factors at play that do hinder aggressive play a lot and slow down the current pace of the game a bit more than what the movement system does on its own, which we'll get into in a second here. Overall, there is a lot that I do like here, and as a result, I really enjoy playing the beta, and I also feel like I'm gonna enjoy playing the full release game. But in saying that, I do feel like there have been some steps in the wrong direction as well, some things that I think are pretty easy fixes and some that are less so. Let's firstly talk about the good old perk system here. The perk system this time around has essentially been rewritten, giving you 
you two quote-unquote basic perks to run as you initially spawn into the game, and then you progressively unlock two additional, arguably more powerful perks as the game progresses. So at the end of the game, you'll end up with four perks running at a time, but you'll never start a game with your full perk kit. And I am well and truly not a fan of this system. It takes some of the power away from you, the player, to build a kit that is catered to certain play styles, and it only really allows you to get the full potential from your loadouts in the late game. As some examples, perks like Ghost, or what is essentially the sleight of hand perk for faster reloads in this game, you have to unlock over time in a match. Those are two critical perks to certain playstyles, and not having them from the get-go, it kind of sucks. And beyond that, the biggest sticking point for me here is that it just feels incredibly random as to what my loadout is going to be capable of at given points in time in a match. More often than not, I have no idea as to how long I have to wait until my next perks come online. If I'm having a particularly hectic game, then I'll completely forget what perks I've unlocked at that given point in time as well. If I miss the alert saying that I have Ghost unlocked for a match, then I have no idea as to whether or not I should be having a heart attack every time an enemy gets a UAV above me. And let's be real, that happens a lot in this game due to the minimap changes, more on those later. And to be honest, I think that this change here and the randomness that has been set by the perk system now does a bit to hurt the aggressive playstyle in the game. Once again, looping back, the movement system is not the only factor that hurts more aggressive playstyles here. The perk system to me is most certainly one of them. Next up here, and this is another big sticking point in the community right now, the footstep audio. Now, I want to make one thing abundantly clear here. Footstep audio is something that I want to be able to hear in my first person shooter games. There's been plenty of times in say Apex Legends where I haven't even come close to hearing footstep audio even though someone is basically peering over my shoulder and I've died because of it. Footstep audio is a key element to providing players with the necessary situational awareness to react to flanking opponents. And I like that footstep audio is a thing in this game, which is why I always rebute that dead silence should be a perk. I really don't believe that you should be able to completely cancel out a very important sensory element of game mechanics just so that you can go rushing around the map without any consequences. But by that same token, holy shit is the footstep audio in this game dialed to 11 and it is way too loud at this current given point in time, which is why you're hearing so many calls to action for Infinity Ward to make Dead Silence a perk. Hearing someone from the other side of a solid brick wall, for example, when there are no doorways nearby, is excessive. Hearing that there is someone three rooms down from my position is excessive. Hearing someone that is halfway across the map from me is excessive, and also contributes to the slower pace of this title. With footsteps being this loud, and with the amount of warning they give you to an incoming player, it's no wonder people are scared to move around quickly in this game. And that's why people are also seeking for a more consistent counter to that footstep audio. People will hear enemy players coming from multiple postcodes away in this game. As I said, I think that having clear and recognizable footstep audio is a good thing here, but I also don't think it should be used as a primary means of locating every opponent on the map like you're a dolphin with fucking echolocation. If you're paying attention, it should be a tool of limited use that adds to your game sense when it needs to and when you're in immediate danger. But it shouldn't drive the pace of your entire game and be the sole point of intelligence for your entire game. So I think that while it's great that footstep audio is here, here and it's audible, the range in which it is audible and the scenarios in which it is audible needs to be dialed down considerably. Additionally, visibility. I have to be real with you all guys, there were times where I really struggled with actually seeing bad guys on my screen here, even prior to the firefights where the excessive visual recoil and muzzle effects got in the way. I don't know, there was something about this game where I just struggled identifying targets on some of the maps. Infinity War do like to use very monotone and desaturated color palettes and the maps in this game are very densely populated with props and cover, so characters tend to blend in quite easily. And that doesn't really help as far as readability and gameplay is concerned. It was something that I was able to grow out of slightly with more game time as I sort of worked out what to look for, but I definitely felt it was noticeable enough to mention here in the video. Now, let's go ahead and throw in yet another hotly debated topic in the community right now, the minimap. Obviously, we all by now know the minimap no longer shows players that are shooting unsuppressed weapons and will only show up enemy players while a UAV is live. This was actually something that I thought 
was a first time for the Call of Duty franchise, and I sweared by that statement on a stream like an idiot. But a viewer informed me that Modern Warfare 2019 did in fact have a similar design, and they were right. I have forgotten who you are, but props to you, you got me. Anyways, the minimap not showing targets and where they are shooting from is one that has taken me a while to really formulate an opinion on here, because on one hand, it forces you to rely more on your actual game sense as opposed to just going, ooh, big shiny red dot on map, me go to big red shiny dot. You know, I really feel like that side of the COD franchise and just really FPS gaming in general, which has adopted this mechanic for the most part, has sort of turned the FPS community into cats that are just chasing laser pointers around maps, you know? Not having it requires you to read the map in a different way and ask, okay, where are my teammates? Where are my enemies likely to be? Oh, I heard gunfire over there. Is that going to be a teammate? No, stuff like that. And that to me isn't such a bad thing to a certain extent, but... I feel like this is something that is such a staple of the Call of Duty franchise and how it plays now that to remove it is probably going to feel jarring to the community without much in the way of actual benefit to the gameplay loop. COD is a fast-paced franchise, and despite this game's slower pace currently, this is still a fast-paced shooter respectively. Having those blips of information as to where enemies are located does go a long way in reading the map and the flow of the game, especially when the spawn points rotate. This change also removes some of the decision making that comes from running suppressors, you know? Like, it feels like suppressors in this game have lost one of their key roles. So why would you run them when you could just run a muzzle mod to reduce some of that recoil? I don't know, it just feels a bit weird and it feels like suppressors kind of get forced out of the, you know, meaningful attachment selection process. So after some thinking on the minimap, I get it. It's a way to really get players to rely on their situational awareness beyond just duct taping their eyes to said minimap and watching for those red dots. But I don't think it does anything beneficial for the COD experience at the end of the day. And just again, awkwardly slows down the pace of the game in the wrong ways. And we know that from people digging into the custom settings of the game, this is a setting that could just be turned on and off on a game by game basis. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of hoping Infinity War just flick that switch, except that this is not the way to go and sort of go from there. So noting that this video is getting ridiculously long and is something that, you know, I didn't expect to get as long as it has, I'm really into anticipating that I will enjoy Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I think there is enough here for me to enjoy. I think the progression of all the weaponry in the game is definitely going to keep me engaged and interested for long enough. I just feel like that there are some annoyances with how the game plays at the moment that can be worked on over time. Yes, this is a slower paced Call of Duty game and no, more aggressive players, like myself included, are going to have to adapt to that if we want to enjoy this game a little bit more. As somebody who really enjoys uh, digging into first-person shooters and making the most of them from a skill perspective, I feel like there's enough of a skill curve here to the point where I can sort of become a better player and express skill in different ways. So it'll be a game that I will find myself enjoying, no doubt, but I do think there are some issues that need to be worked out prior to the game going out into full release to just sort of tighten up that experience a little bit more. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the wrap up to today's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta thoughts. Uh, this definitely ended up being a video that took way longer than I thought it was going to. So yeah, sorry about that. But anyway, if you are still here, hit that like button. It does go a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're somebody who is new here and you really did enjoy the content, then consider subscribing as it puts you up to date with whenever we release more content. We do cover a wide variety variety of first person shooter games here so if fps is your thing then you're in the right place and also keeps up to date with whenever we go live as we do stream here on youtube but as always guys i hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one